Welcome to Core Kind today for October 23rd, 2019. This is the show where I break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of Core Kind right now and give you my opinion on them. If you would like to learn more about these stories, check out the show notes down below. I'll put a link to each story there. You can read them for yourself and come up with your own opinions. We'll love to hear from you. Now, if you're new here, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. It really does help us because it lets YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. And hopefully we can help you break free from the high cost of cable TV and still watch the shows you enjoy. Well, let's dive into it because there's been a lot of news in the last 24 hours, but a quick reminder of a few deals. For one, there's been a lot of deals this week. So we posted the top five best core cutting deals, things like a, um, the Fire TV Stick 4K on sale, the Roku Stick Plus on sale, and more. But one in particular uh, I wanted to point out, you can find all those deals in the show notes down below, is that the Amazon Echo Dot is on sale for $8.98 with a free month of Amazon Music Unlimited. Now there's a catch here, you cannot have had Amazon Music Unlimited in the past, you have to qualify for this. But it seems like Amazon is trying to push their um, Amazon Music Unlimited service so that they can uh, get more subscribers to it. But this is um, Echo Dot's typically over 50 bucks. So this is a great way, of course, you can always cancel the Amazon Music Unlimited service there, but you get a, an Echo Dot for $8.98 and a month of Amazon Music. So check that out, link in the show notes down below. Using those links help support corecarsnews.com. All right, let's get into the news of the day. Uh, Comcast's free streaming player comes with a hidden $156 a year fee. Now, last month, Comcast announced that they're making their Flex streaming player, which is basically their cable box, or their X1 interface, um, into a streaming player. And this will now allow um, them to try to reach streamers. There's a lot of catches. You've probably seen me write in the past about how this really isn't a good deal for core cutters because, for example, they don't allow many of the live TV streaming services on it. Um, you won't find YouTube TV, uh, Hulu's live TV version, Hulu On Demand, I think it's in there, PlayStation View, etc., on it. But you will find Comcast TV service. But now The Verge has come out and reported that, hey, there is a little bit of a hidden fee here because not only do you need to rent a modem from Comcast, you need to rent their um, high-end modem that costs $13 a month. And with that, you get the free flex streaming player. And I, somebody said in their market, they're getting free unlimited data with that too. But you know, that's the tough thing. For $156 a year, you can buy multiple Rokus. You could buy an Apple TV, a Fire TV and more, and then go buy a modem and not pay them the $13 a month. So it's always important to remember um, to do your research on these deals. Uh, a lot of cable companies are trying to reach out, find ways to you know, capture that streaming market a little bit more. And Comcast has made it clear that they don't intend to have all streaming apps included on this device. They want to be selective on what would be included. So let me know, do you have a Flex? I've yet to talk to anybody who actually owns the Flex. I don't live in a Comcast market anymore, so I can't get one to test it out. They haven't offered me a review unit. But leave me a comment, let me know. Now one thing here is apparently the um, Comcast did tell The Verge eventually they plan to drop the requirement to rent a modem. That hasn't happened yet. So if you have one, let me know. If you've been thinking about it, keep in mind that $150 some dollar a year hidden fee there. All right, next up, a really cool feature Roku is now doing. They're rolling out a new, um, easier sign-up process for free trials. So if a Roku channel applies, now you can um, sign up and trial a service like HBO Now without having to create an account. With just a click of the button, you can now start a free trial. They do this by linking it to your Roku account. So with that click of the button, you instantly have linked your Roku account to HBO and you now are streaming HBO through a free trial and they'll remind you to cancel it. If you don't cancel it, your payment method through your Roku account gets billed. But this removes one of the biggest issues a lot of people complain about core cutting. It's like, hey, I wanna try out this service for a few months and that one to jump around. You know, I had to have an account here and an account there and billing here. And what was that password for HBO? Or is it different than Hulu? Was it different than Netflix? We've seen a lot of services try to come up and address this. We have uh, Amazon Channels was one of the first where you can use your Amazon account to manage all that. Apple TV, the Roku channel, um, Sling TV's been doing this and more. 
Now we're hearing that with Roku, they're making it even easier. You just click on it, you say, I wanna start my free trial, boom, you have an account, you're streaming. It's that simple. Now you don't have to use the Roku account. You can still go create an account on HBO and log into your HBO app, HBO Now app on Roku, Apple TV, Fire TV, et cetera. This is just one more way, one more option. And I actually like this. You know, I don't think we found a perfect solution for this, but I think we are moving towards consolidating this all down to just a few um, easy to use passwords and usernames that will work for multiple services out there. I think Apple TV channels, Amazon channels, the Roku channel, and more, Sling TV app even, are kind of, I think, the future. Or like with Sling TV and others where you can say, hey, I want NBA League Pass, I'm just going to add it to my Sling TV account, or I'm going to add um, a HBO Now to Amazon channels, for example, and use that. So I love that. Let me know if you use these services. Do you find them um, helpful? I know some people will say, hey, Luke, I want my own accounts, all that. And I get that. But if you're somebody who enjoys these kind of features, let me know. All right, yesterday, Discovery had an interview with CNBC, Discovery CEO, and he kind of had some interesting um, looks at what Discovery is doing with streaming. For a while, we've heard that about five or maybe six dollar streaming bundle will come from Discovery, give you access to a ton of Discovery content. And now Discovery CEO is pumping the brakes a little bit on that, saying, no, we're not looking to do a bundle or an a la carte option right now. We're kind of watching. He's kind of, he just said, hey, we're kind of just watching the market not going to rule out doing an a la carte like service or a bundle service. We've heard in the past that maybe they would take some of their lesser known channels and offer a direct way to subscribe, which may be kind of what we saw with the Food Network yesterday launching a uh, standalone service that you can watch on like your Echo or your TV and more. But he was very clear that, you know, Discovery is not necessarily going to run into launching um, their own service. Now you can get Discovery with Philo for 20 bucks with a whole ton of other channels, which is a pretty good deal. But for anybody who is hoping that Discovery is gonna follow through and have that five or six hour bundle that would give you all the Discovery networks or a ton of them really cheap, for now that doesn't seem to be happening. Discovery CEO was pretty clear that he's not ruling that out, but at this moment he doesn't think that's gonna happen. So we'll keep an eye on it. But let me know, how much would you pay for the Discovery channels? It, you remember they own scripts now, so like the Learning Channel, eight, HETV, um, the Science Channel, Discovery, and more all under Discovery. With all those channels bundled together, five bucks is not a bad price, five, six bucks. I, I would think that's a reasonable price for all of them on there. So let me know what you would pay. And I've often said that would probably be the first type of a la carte, right? Where Viacom would make all their channels available and then Discovery would and so on. Now that's not the end of uh, a la carte, I th always thought that would be kind of one of the first steps towards a la carte TV. So far, we really haven't gotten there. We have seen things like Disney Plus and Peacock and more coming, but they're not necessarily a la carte. It's not access to the live channel. It's access to some of their older content and more. So let me know what you think and what your expectations are from things like Discovery Service. All right, T-Mobile announced today that they intend to have 200 million Americans covered by 5G by the end of 2019. Now this is, um, by the end of 2019, good news is um, this is a work in progress. They say that it will come soon, but they didn't say when. So, and they all, one other thing for all the technical people out there, they said this would be in the 600 megahertz, I hope I'm saying that right, range. That will be the foundation for how they build out their 5G network going forward. So leave me a comment. Uh, let me know if you're a T-Mobile customer. Right now, this is not T-Mobile home internet, unfortunately. I know we had a story about Verizon rolling out 5G home internet to Chicago. T-Mobile says they're going to do 5G home internet and compete in that. But as of today, that's not happening, and they're working towards it, though. They do say that they intend to have 5G home internet but mobile internet is probably gonna be where they start off with this. So good news, 5G, they say pretty much nationwide, 200, Amer 200 million Americans, wow, that's a lot, will be covered. So let me know what you think of that. And um, if you've been concerned about the high cost of cable TV fees, you are not alone. Today, Congress will hold, in the Senate, excuse me, 
will hold hearings about the high cost of cable TV fees. Um, Consumer Reports had a study recently about all the fees. They're going to be testifying in front of Congress today in the Senate, and um, excuse me, in the Senate. And they will be talking about the high cost of cable TV fees. This is part of a process to renew some rules about satellite television. There's even a bill about fairness and advertising when it comes to all these fees to try to force um, these companies to include their fees in your advertised price. This is one of the biggest things I always complain about is many of these prices are standardized, right? They know what the price is. They're advertising a DVR, but they don't mention the DVR fee, for example. Or they advertise regional sports networks, but they don't tell you about the regional sports network fee, broadcast TV fees, etc. These are things they know about. These are things that are guaranteed built in. I think on many of them, there's no way to get around regional sports and there's no way to get around broadcast TV. Well, there's no way to get around it, you know what it is, why isn't that part of the advertised price? And that's kind of what Congress was looking at a little bit with that fairness and advertising bill and more. So I did include, if you want to talk to your, your representatives, encourage them to support these kind of bills, I did include a way to do that down below. But it'll be interesting to see if anything comes from these reports. We have seen in the past uh, bills like this come and then die. So we'll have to keep a close eye on it, but for now, nothing seems to be, um, or for now, they seem to be going forward, but nothing seems to be on the um, books to vote on this. All right, Sling TV is offering a free Roku or Air TV when you prepay. You can also get a Roku Ultra for half off if you prepay. So you've been thinking about trying out Sling TV, want to get a free Roku or Air TV, this is maybe the time to do it. If you prepay for two months, you can get an uh, Air TV or Roku Express. If you prepay for three months, you can get half off a Roku Ultra. Really good deal. Check that out, link in the show notes down below. And Hulu is adding the ability to download movies to Android devices. Now, movies and television shows. Now, a few catches here, you have to be on a un- commercial free plan. You can't be on a limited commercial plan. Only works, I believe, for on-demand content. Um, from the you know the basic packages. If you have a live TV service, I don't believe you can download any of the additional on-demand content from the live TV service. But this is great news. It was available on iOS a little over a week ago, I want to say now. Now they're rolling it out to, um, to Android devices. So if you don't have it, update your Hulu app. It'll be rolling out. And let me know what you think. There are often sometimes where some titles won't be available. Same thing happens with uh, Netflix, for example. All right, so that's the news of the day. Don't forget, I'll be live at 8 p.m. Eastern today answering all your core cutting related questions. So leave us a comment. I'll love to hear from you. If you're new here, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. We really appreciate it. And join us every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern, where we talk all things core cutting live on YouTube right here. Take care, everybody. Thanks for your support. I really appreciate it.